3.19 in the morning, Eastern Sicily. The moment Earth revealed its deadliest secret. Mount Etna's eruption had been spectacular but predictable. Tourists gathered on safe slopes to watch the fireworks, airports shut down for ash, and scientists monitored the familiar volcanic show that had played out hundreds of times before. But then the ground beneath Flerry started moving in ways that broke every rule of volcanic physics. The magnitude 4.9 earthquake was not supposed to happen. Etna sits 30 kilometers away and eruptions do not trigger regional seismic events. Except this one did, and it kept going. Within two days, over 1,000 tremors were systematically fracturing eastern Sicily. Italy's National Institute of Geophysics could not explain it. The seismic pattern looked like a controlled demolition of the island's bedrock. Each earthquake perfectly positioned to transfer stress to the next fault, creating a cascade of geological failure spreading outward from Etna's base. The discovery that followed changed everything scientists thought they knew about volcanic systems. So here is the question that is haunting researchers across the Mediterranean. If Etna can trigger systematic fault failure across Sicily with one eruption, what happens when the evacuation of 600 people becomes a 3 million person catastrophe that models are now predicting? Mount Etna isn't just any volcano, it's Europe's tallest and most active giant, the ancient fire-breathing dragon that has shaped Sicilian civilization for millennia. For over 500,000 years, this 11,000 feet stratovolcano has towered above the Mediterranean, building itself layer by layer, eruption by eruption, into one of the world's most iconic volcanic landscapes. Dr. Marco Neri of Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology says Etna has the longest recorded eruption history of any volcano on Earth, with documented activity stretching back to 1500 BC. For 3,500 years, this mountain has erupted on average once per year, its lava flows and ash clouds weaving into the very fabric of Sicilian culture. Over 25% of Sicily's population, nearly one million people, live on Etna's slopes, drawn by the rich volcanic soil that makes the region an agricultural paradise. The mountain's constant activity is a backdrop to daily life. Eruptions are festivities, ash is a fertilizer, and lava flows are tourist attractions. Dr. Elena Kubelis of the Vesuvius Observatory explains the typical eruption pattern Sicilians have grown accustomed to. Etna has a remarkably consistent personality. It tends to erupt in long sequences of spectacular but relatively safe activity. Lava fountains, ash plumes, and slow-moving lava flows, all of which give people plenty of time to get out of the way. The mountain's eruptions have been so regular, so predictable, that many volcanologists considered Etna to be one of the safest volcanoes in the world, a gentle giant that could be relied upon to never surprise the communities living in its shadow. But Etna had been hiding something. Beneath the postcard scenery and dazzling pyrotechnics, a geological threat was building that would shatter every assumption about how volcanoes and earthquakes interact. The warning signs had been there for decades, but no one put the pieces together until it was too late. GPS measurements showed that the mountain's southeastern flank, a Manhattan-sized landmass, had been slowly sliding towards the Ionian Sea at a rate of 14 millimeters per year. That is roughly the speed your fingernails grow. Barely perceptible, but inexorable. Scientists had long known about this flank instability. It is a common feature of large volcanoes. Etna had even suffered catastrophic flank collapses in the distant past, most recently 8,000 years ago, in an event that created the picturesque horseshoe-shaped Valle del Bove Canyon. But what volcanologists did not realize was that each new eruption was not just adding more mass to the sliding flank, it was also storing up unreleased seismic energy in the mountain's basement. Every cubic meter of magma, every ton of ash, Every lava flow was adding to the strain on a complex network of fault lines that lay hidden beneath the volcano. 
It took 21st century satellite technology to reveal what traditional seismology had missed. Dr. John Murray, a geophysicist at the Open University, used a technique called Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, known as INSAR, to map Etna's surface deformation with millimeter precision. What he discovered was a time bomb. The INSAR data showed that during major eruptions, the ground deformation was not confined to the volcano's summit or flanks. It extended for dozens of kilometers into the surrounding region along jagged lines that looked suspiciously like faults. But these were not faults that appeared on any existing geological maps. The reason, Murray realized, was that these faults had not moved for thousands of years. They were locked deep in the basement rock, sealed shut by the weight of Etna's hulking mass pressing down upon them. But each new eruption was adding to that mass, incrementally increasing the strain on the dormant fault lines. It was like watching a rubber band being stretched to its breaking point in slow motion. And on December 26, 2018, the rubber band finally snapped. The day after Christmas, Etna unleashed a spectacularly violent eruption from its newly formed southeast crater. Lava fountains shot nearly a kilometer into the air, raining down car-sized fragments of molten rock onto the snow-covered slopes. An ash column surged eight kilometers into the sky, spreading a dark pall over eastern Sicily. For volcano watchers, it was a thrilling display of Etna's power. But deep beneath the lava and ash, something far more ominous was unfolding. At 3.19 a.m., a magnitude 4.9 earthquake struck the small town of Flery, 30 kilometers from the erupting craters. This was not one of the small, localized tremors that often accompany volcanic activity. It was a full-fledged tectonic earthquake, the type typically associated with fault movement far from any volcano. Seismologists were stunned. Dr. Carmelo Monaco, a geophysicist at the University of Catania, said the Flery earthquake raised immediate red flags. It occurred in an area that had been totally quiet for decades, and the seismic waves indicated movement on a deep fault that should not have been affected by the eruption. But it was only the beginning. Within hours, dozens of smaller earthquakes rippled through eastern Sicily, tracing an ominous spiderweb pattern that seemed to spread outwards from Etna's base. As the eruption raged on the surface, seismic activity in the subsurface kept escalating. Residents of the mountain villages began reporting a strange sensation, a pulsating vibration in the ground that felt like a heartbeat. Buildings started to shake, cracks appeared in walls and roads. In the town of Zafarana at Nea, a statue of the Virgin Mary toppled from its pedestal and shattered on the church floor. Dr. Salvatore Alperone, a seismologist at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics, watched the data coming in from the seismic network with growing alarm. The earthquakes were behaving in a way we had never seen before. They were not random or chaotic, like typical aftershocks. They were marching through the landscape with almost military precision, as if they were following a predetermined battle plan. Within 48 hours, the surreal truth became impossible to ignore. The December 2018 eruption had triggered a chain reaction of fault ruptures that was systematically unzipping the stitches that held eastern Sicily together. By the time the seismic sequence ended, over 1,000 earthquakes had rattled an area of 2,500 square kilometers. The implications were staggering. It was not just that Etna could trigger local earthquakes, that much had been suspected since the 1980s. It was the scale and systematic progression of the fault ruptures that shook the foundations of volcanology. If a single eruption could activate a branching network of faults across an entire region, then everything scientists thought they knew about the relationship between volcanoes and earthquakes was wrong. The 1000 earthquakes were a wake-up call that Etna was not just a volcano. It was the surface manifestation of a monstrous geological machine that had been hiding in plain sight for millennia. A machine that could turn a single volcanic eruption into a regional seismic catastrophe. 
In the months that followed, geologists pored over the data from the December 2018 event, piecing together a picture of what had happened beneath the surface. The scenario they reconstructed reads like a geological horror story. The eruption had started normally enough, with magma rising from a shallow reservoir and venting through the southeast crater. But as the magma erupted, it was also forcing open new cracks and fissures in the volcanic edifice. Pressurized gases and fluids escaped through these cracks, not onto the surface, but into the fractured bedrock supporting the massive volcano, as above, so below. Just as the eruption was creating a spectacular show of fire and ash on the surface, it was also generating a hidden plumbing system of fluid-filled cracks in the subsurface. That plumbing system was growing, spreading, and finding new pathways through Sicily's ancient basement rock. Some of those pathways led directly to fault lines that had been locked for thousands of years, faults that had been invisibly stressed to their breaking point by the gradual build-up of elastic energy as Etna piled on weight above them. All they needed was a little push, a little lubrication to start sliding. The high pressure volcanic fluids surging through the newly opened cracks provided exactly that. Like a subterranean industrial lubricant, they loosened the friction that had been holding the Sicilian faults together. One by one, the faults began to slip, releasing their pent-up energy in earthquakes. But it was not a random process. The volcanic fluids were migrating along specific pathways in the subsurface, targeting faults that were optimally oriented to slip in sequence. It was like a geological game of Jenga, each fault rupture destabilizing the next block in the stack. Dr. Alperone's battle plan analogy turned out to be disturbingly accurate. The seismic data showed that each new fault rupture occurred at the precise location that would magnify the stress on the next fault down the line. It was a cascading failure, a chain reaction in which every link was perfectly positioned to trigger the next. In the end, all it took was a little volcanic grease to lubricate the first domino. The resulting earthquake sequence was like watching Sicily unzip itself in real time. The scale of the disaster was mercifully smaller than it could have been. The earthquakes damaged hundreds of buildings and displaced over 600 people in the worst hit towns of Fleury and Zafarana et Nea. But no lives were lost, and the region escaped the catastrophic destruction that a similar seismic sequence might cause in a more densely populated area. But for the scientists tasked with keeping those populations safe, December 2018 was a terrifying glimpse into a future they had not prepared for. Dr. Eugenio Privatera, the director of the Etna Observatory, summed up the new reality volcanologists must confront. We can no longer think of Etna or any volcano as an isolated geological feature. They are interconnected with fault systems, systems that can transmit seismic energy over vast distances triggering earthquakes far from the eruptive center. The implications for hazard assessment and risk mitigation are profound. If volcanoes and fault systems are engaged in a deadly tango across whole regions, then the old playbooks for volcanic disaster management are dangerously inadequate. Emergency planners can no longer focus solely on localized lava flows and ash falls. They must now reckon with the possibility that even a moderate eruption could be the butterfly wing flap that sets off a regional seismic catastrophe. Imagine if the next flank eruption triggers a fault rupture that propagates all the way to Messina, the city of 240,000 people perched precariously on the strait between Sicily and mainland Italy. Or if the seismic chain reaction does not stop at Sicily's shores, but jumps across the water to the slumbering supervolcanoes of the Aeolian Islands or Campania. These are the scenarios that volcanologists are now forced to grapple with, thanks to Etna's dark Christmas surprise. The volcano that was once seen as a reliable friend, a gentle giant, has revealed itself to be a frenemy, a lovely deadly companion that can turn on a dime from harmless beauty to regional nemesis. The volcanoes are awakening, that much is clear, but they are not stirring alone.
Beneath their rumbling summits, the fractures that crisscross the Earth's crust are awakening with them. Yawning open, preparing to dance to the volcano's tune. Etna showed us how the dance begins, but it is surely not where it will end. How many other volcanoes are poised to join the deadly rhythm? How many fault systems are waiting for their cue to start unzipping the ground beneath our feet? The answers may come sooner than we would like. Because, as we have seen, it does not take much to get the earth dancing. Just a little volcanic push, a little subterranean lubrication, and the dominoes will start to fall. This is why, at this very moment, volcanologists and seismologists across the world are poring over their data with renewed urgency, looking for any signs of that first domino teetering. Listening for the whisper that will tell them where Etna's deadly dance will make its next appearance. The one thing they are sure of is this, the whisper will come. Somewhere, another volcano is already clearing its throat getting ready for an eruption that will not be content to stand it alone. And when that whisper reaches a scream, when the lava starts to fountain and the dominoes start to fall, you will hear about it here first. Because at Earth Attacks, we are always listening for the screams that will wake up the world. And so you must subscribe to stay ahead of the new and be ready when it matters.